Good morning friends. Welcome back to my channel Coding Environment. This video will be the continuation of the last video where I tried to explain what is solid design principle in any object oriented programming language like Java. In the last video I also tried to explain what is single responsibility principle. This video will be the continuation where I tried to explain what is open and closed principle in solid design principle. So let's see what is open and closed principle. So open and closed principle states that each software entity like classes, modules, functions should be open for extension but closed for modification. So what does it mean actually? It means that we should be able to write our code so that we will be able to add a new functionality without changing the existing source code. What benefit it will bring to our development process? So it will bring the benefit of not testing the already written or tested code when you are trying to add a new functionality. So open and closed principle is not a very new concept. It was a very old concept. So if you go back in the history, first time in 1988, Barton Mayer tried to explain this principle. In one of his books, he states that a class is closed since it may be compiled, stored in a library, baseline and used by client classes. But it is also open since any new class may use it as parent, adding new features. Unfortunately, Mayer tried to propose the inheritance concept of Java to achieve this functionality. So what is problem with this inheritance? Inheritance introduces a tight coupling if the subclasses depend on the implementation of its parent. Later in the development phase, Martin proposed interface instead of inheritance to achieve open and closed principle. As a developer, we always look for the code to get the concept cleared. So this is a very simple example where I am trying to explain what is open and closed principle. Before I should go and show you the codes of the open and closed principle, let me show you if you are not following the open and closed principle in Java, what are the problems we are going to face. So for the sake of the time, I have already written the classes. You can see I have three classes, addition, calculator and a subtraction. So when I am opening these three classes, you can see that addition class has three attributes, A, B and result. So the functionality of this class is it is going to add the value of a and b and to store the value in result. Similarly, I have a subtraction class where there are three attributes a, b and result. Here also the functionality of this subtraction class is to subtract a minus b and store the result in c. There is a calculator class which will do this operation. In this calculator class, if you observe I have a calculate method where the input parameter is a type of object and we will pass the object like addition and subtraction. Based on the object type as it is an instance of addition or subtraction, I am doing here some operation like in the case of addition, I am adding, uh, adding attribute A and B and storing it in the result. Similarly, in the case of the subtraction, I am Similarly, in the case of the subtraction, I am uh, subtracting attribute B from attribute A and storing the result in attribute result. So what is the problem in this approach? Even if I am going to run this code, so let me create a main class. Public mean. I'm creating an object of calculator class so that I can call the calculate method. So it is object. I'm creating an object here of calculator class. Now, as you can see, I have to pass the object of addition class or a subtraction class to call this method calculate. So I'm creating an object of addition class.
and I'm passing the value of A as 10 and value of B as 5. Similarly, I'm creating a subtraction class passing a value of A as 10 and value of B as 5. Now, if I have to call this calculate class, I can call it by using object obj dot calculate and I can pass the add object. So if I'm doing this, I have to fix this try catch. Okay, let me, uh, let me throw it also. So now, now you can see that I am calling the calculate method from my main method and passing the object of addition. Similarly, I can call the calculate method and pass the object of subtraction. So let me do that also. So here I can pass the subtraction method. Subtraction class I am passing and it is calling the calculate method. After doing this operation, let's, let's print the value of different objects. So, I have an object, uh, let me print the value of result, which is system.out.println and then me, let me print the result, which is nothing but addition.result. Similarly, I can print the result for subtraction also. So this is my subtraction result. It's good. So now if I run this class, you can see I'm getting a correct value. In the first case, when the result, uh, in the first case, when it was an addition operation, it is giving me as a 15. And in the second case, when it was a subtraction operation, it is giving me result as a 5. So you can see this program is working as expected. But what is the problem with this program? Now suppose tomorrow, if I have to support the multiplication, what are the things I have to do in this case? So let me try to support the multiplication operation also in this calculator class. For this, I have to create a multiplication class let me create that multiplication class. It's the multiplication. And in this also, I have these three operators. Sorry, in this also, I have three parameters, A, B, and result will store the result. So to support this multiplication, I have to again go into this calculator class. And in this calculate method, which is already tried and tested method, I have to edit this method, which is like else if. And then I have to check it is this operation is of type multiplication or not. So I will give it as a multiplication. And if it is multiplication, what I can do is like store the result. Sorry, this multiplication is something uh, it is not taking. Okay, yeah, I have not uh, type casted it. That's why it is not taking. Let me type cast its value. So here it is instead of subtraction, it is multiplication. And now you can see if the result and it is basically object A into object B. And if I try to again do that multiplication, this driver or main class I'm going to edit. So let me do that. This, this and the value again, I'm passing it as a 10 and five only. So this is multiplication. Now I am passing this multiplication object in this calculate method 
and let's see what the result I'm going to get. So here again, if I am going to run this class, you can, uh, okay, so what's wrong? Okay, this subtraction is the one. So if I'm going and editing this also, and yes, let me run it. Yeah, you can see this result is coming as a 50. So whenever I'm going to add a new operation, what I have to do is to go and edit this particular calculate method. This calculate method is already tried and tested. So whenever you are going to add a new operation, you have to go and edit this calculate method, which is not good because it is already tested code. So what the open and close principle says that you should be able to add a new functionality without changing the original or tested source code, which is not happening in this case. So how we can achieve that functionality, like how we can support a new feature without changing the original source code. So how we can change this code so that it will be compatible with the open and closed principle of solid design principle. So to do that, we have to change the code in such a way that whenever we are trying to add a new functionality in this particular process, we don't have to go and change this particular calculate method. So as Martin proposed that we can use interface, let me go and create an interface called operation in this package. So what I'm going to do is I'm creating an interface called operation. In this package. So this operation interface will have a method who will return nothing. Its return type is void and it input argument is also void. So I have created an interface called operation and I have a method called perform. And now all the operations like addition, multiplication and subtraction is going to implement this interface. So let me do that this addition class is going to implement that interface. So what it is going to do is, it's going to implement that operation interface. So as it is going to implement, it has to implement that method also, which is called void perform. And this perform operation is basically going to do that operation like addition, subtraction or multiplication. So in this case, it is going to do the addition, which is this dot result is equal to this dot A into this dot B. Sorry, this is not a multiplication, this is addition. So change it to plus. And it is going to perform, it's the public method. Great. So the same thing for I'm going to do for the calculated uh, multiplication also. So if this multiplication method is also going to implement my operation interface. So this also have to implement that interface method. So it is what perform. Basically, this is also going to this dot result to this dot a into this is multiplication is yes, this dot b and this also created and similarly for the subtraction also I have to do that so let me implement that operation interface and same thing here. It's a public word perform this dot result equal to this dot a minus this dot b. So here you can see that uh, the subtraction is doing in. So what is different in this approach from the last approach? In this approach, we have 
extracted the perform operation from the calculated method and pass it to the class which is doing uh, and pass it to the class to the actual class where the operation has to be done so in this addition calc uh, multiplication and subtraction actually the perform operation is happening and the calculator method what we have to do is like take that operation that operation interface and instead of this if and else we just have to call that method which is of type operation dot perform now if you see if i run this program i'm still getting my correct output and now suppose i have to do the subtraction which is actually adding a new functionality into the existing code now suppose i have to add a, a new function called a division uh, so for division i don't have to go and change this calculate method what i can do is i can create a division class so let me do that so let me create the division class and show that i'm going to add a new functionality and i'm not going to touch this calculate method so let me create that uh, division class here so i'm going to use this addition class to basically create the division class let me do copy just as engineers we are always doing this copy and testing so to that division, division and in this division basically we are going to do and do the division so now if in the driver class if i have to do that operation i'm going to call this division class here Pass this div. So now you can see I'm not touching this calculate method, which is tried and tested code, and still I am getting my desired output which is like it is now able to do that division also you can see here it, it is able to do the division so this is the way we should always follow the open and closed principle in object oriented design development hope you like that video thank you for watching it if you like it please subscribe my channel have a great day